Hello and welcome to my studio. I want to take you through what I've built. I decided to set about building a siren disc organ. Uh, so essentially a 200 year old synthesizer if you like. Um, so this system works with a spinning disc that normally spins at great speed with a high pressure air system that blows air through a series of holes and the frequency of those holes passing the airflow um, creates a note and the more holes there are um, per ring because you tend to have a series of concentric rings of holes um, the higher the pitch. Uh, the pitch can then also be altered by increasing or decreasing the speed at which the disc spins uh, but the relationship, the interval between the various notes on a disc always remains the same. So as I say this normally has a high pressure air system and a very straight running disc. Um, we don't have a high pressure air system, we have a very old antique in fact um, blacksmith's bellows that I push constantly with my foot um, and we also don't have anything that runs very true on the mammoth peat organ. So, it was quite a challenge because those um, elements getting the high pressure air through the disc at very close proximity is what makes the um, siren disc sound uh, efficiently, so loudly really. So, And in the context of the mouth beat organ it's important that we try and get each of the elements playing um, as loudly and acoustically efficiently as they can so that they can um, play against, say, the drum module, because everybody knows drummers are noisy. So I decided that uh, quite early on, having started on paper and then quickly got into some quite terrifying tests with me blowing through um, things as they're spinning at great speed, and then these kind of versions that were chattering all over the place as they span at great speed, um, I decided that it needed to be abstracted from the main drive um, system that we use um, for a couple of reasons. One is that it meant I could use more engineering grade um, parts, so straight bar instead of threaded bar, and then a, a, a sort of better coupling system using belts and stuff like that. Um, also meant I could gear it. And then the way that it um, joins the module I also adapted from how we normally do because we normally use cogs and they chatter quite a lot and make quite a lot of extra noise that I tried to um, take away from this module so that it could make more noise than in the musical sense uh, than it does in the just noise of the machine sense. Um, I got pretty successful results out of it. Um, there was then also the opportunity because um, I don't think Helmholtz had a laser cutter. Uh, there was the opportunity to build a series of discs to test, so unusual shaped holes and stuff like that, um, leading to a final solution, which again seemed to give um, greater amplitude, which is good. Um, but still, I wanted a little bit more. So I made, I had a little think about what could be um, a historically accurate uh, amplifier, something that you might have been able to um, use for amplification 200 years ago. And uh, so that led to what you'll see over here now.
So that's the Siren Disc module. Um, as you can see, unlike a Siren Disc that's normally built into an organ of that type, um, there's a lot more access to um, the disc itself and the drive system and even the um, little clown horns as well. So you can really manipulate the sound in ways that you couldn't do if it was inside a normal um, Siren Disc organ or bigger machine. Um, and there's obviously lots more I could have done and lots more that I intend to do. Uh, one of the things that I would like to do and tried a little bit was um, having these valves so that you could have a kind of keyboard way of playing it rather than relying on the existing sequencer or having it always on. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome so far and looking forward to getting it all together sometime with Graham's new machine um, making some noise.